welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to equip a Raspberry Pi 4 with my preferred cooling hardware and a boot SSD in order to create my ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig. Now inevitably I think this video is going to be a bit of a journey of discovery as we iterate towards the final solution. And I hope in the process of going on this journey, I'll pass on some useful ideas and information. So let's go and get started. Right, to build my ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig, I'm going to be using this 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 and the cooler will be a this, which is the Ice Tower from 52 Pi which is the best cooler I've ever tested for a, a Raspberry Pi 4. It's even got a heat pipe in here as well as the fan. We'll be using proper thermal compound to uh, fit it on top of the Pi. It'll go on uh, something like uh, this. Let's put it on there just to show you roughly where it fits in place. And uh, in the tests I've done in the past, this has been by far the best cooler you could fit on a Raspberry Pi 4, but it isn't the most practical as you can see. And in fact, there is now an ice tower cooler that mounts like that, which is more practical. But uh, I particularly wanted to use this one because this rig I'm going to build is not going to be a closed rig. I want to stress that from the start. I want to build an open rig. It really showcases the components and that this is a fantastic component to showcase. And indeed, for quite some time, I've wanted to build like a, a sort of steampunk Raspberry Pi rig. And this, I think, this rig is going to go in that direction. Anyway, that's going to be the cooler. And I also want the Raspberry Pi 4 to be booting from SSD because we can now boot from USB 3. We should take advantage of that. And in the past, when I've used an SSD with a Raspberry Pi, I've used a, something like a, this. This is a Kingston 2.5 inch SSD. And I've connected it to the Raspberry Pi using a, something like this, which is a USB to SATA adapter. And this will just plug in somewhere like this at the end, like that. We just flick it across, this would go into the, the Raspberry Pi, and that works perfectly well. And you might remember in previous videos, I've built a little board to mount things like this. It works perfectly fine, but you do have this rather large loop of wire at the end between the adapter and the Pi. It all sticks out quite a bit. And I'd like to build a rig It's not quite as uh, cumbersome as this. And so my plan is to use an M.2 SSD M.2 SATA SSD in, in this rig, and to somehow have it mounted and connected very neatly to a USB 3 port on the Raspberry Pi. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to happen right now, but that's the plan. Anyway, you've now seen my starting point, so I think it's now time for me to do a little shopping. Greetings. Here I am back again. It's now a few days later, and exciting things have started to arrive. Now, when I've done projects with a Raspberry Pi in the past, I've often bought little packs like this of standoffs for uh, mounting things. But for this project, I've gone completely wild and bought uh, this, which is a whole box of uh, M2.5 uh, brass standoffs. M2.5 means the threads on these standoffs are 2.5 millimeter, which is the size you need for working with a Raspberry Pi. It can be a bit difficult to get, but I've managed to get hold of it. And of course, I will give you uh, links in the video description to everything I'm using here and uh, alternatives because some of these things are slightly obscure. Anyway, let's open this thing up. Great little latch. It even makes a great noise, doesn't it? This sort of sounds makery and exciting. These will give us all sorts of possibilities for mounting things up, all sorts of lengths and, and sizes here, which is really good. So this is a great starting point. But uh, what else have I been buying? Well, for a start, I bought this which is a WD Green 120 gigabyte M.2 SATA SSD. So uh, let's get inside this. I think we just need a stand a knife to give us a little bit of help to uh, open up the top. There we are. And uh, there it is. It's going to be in some kind of a yes thing like that. And there we can see our uh, M.2 SATA SSD. And you're probably thinking, how am I going to connect that to a Raspberry Pi? Well, the solution I hope is going to be this. And this is an external housing for an M.2 SATA drive with a, an adapter to coming through to a USB 3, as you can see. So our drive will go inside here and that will plug uh, into the Raspberry Pi. But uh, you're probably thinking already, Chris, uh, that's rather a, a sticky out thing. If we put this into a Raspberry Pi, it would look something uh, like this. That is not, not ideal, is it? No. So I'm going to try and find a way of actually getting this mounted under the Pi rather neatly. 
And one of the ways I might try and do this is using these, or at least things like these, which as you can see are adapters which route the wiring out of a USB plug at various angles. So for example, this one is USB 3 and takes the cable downwards. So we could take our Raspberry Pi like this and plug this in uh, like that. And we've now got the cable going uh, under the board on the, the Raspberry Pi, which is a bit neat when having things sticking out the front. And I had hoped to use an adapter like uh, this, which is a really cool little device which takes USB through 180 degrees. But sadly, this is only USB 2, and on the Pi at least, it'll only take it upwards. But uh, we could actually fit this. I'll just show you what would actually work. We could put that in like that, and we could plug in our uh, thing like that. And that's a perfectly valid combination. This will actually work, I would, I would think, should work except for the fact that it's only got a USB 2 connection on this, which is rather of a shame, isn't it? And I can't get it under the board. But uh, at least you can see here the sort of things I'm uh, thinking about with these sorts of uh, cables. I can imagine I'm going to be taking these cables apart, doing some soldering, taking this thing apart as well, and also doing some soldering to uh, make everything work for our ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig. Right. I think I'm now in the mood for a bit of construction, and so let's put the uh, M.2 SATA SSD into this uh, USB enclosure. And uh, I think there's just four screws to remove on the top. There we go. And I think now this uh, panel just uh, lifts out. There it is. And in fact, we can now lift out the, uh, the circuit board as well. And I think we have to go, yes, to the other side to find the thing to fit the drive. And we have to first loosen this uh, little retainer, like that. And the drive, if we just uh, flick it round, get it in the, the right place, we'll flick into the uh, thing like that. And we'll flick under there, if I got it right, like that. And then we'll just screw it into place. And uh, there we are, we've mounted it on there. That's uh, nice and straightforward, we can get the uh, case back like that, that flicks like uh, this, that goes uh, in there, and we can flick the top back on, uh, well, back on the top. And uh, there we are. We've now effectively created ourselves a, a rather fast USB drive, haven't we? There's all sorts of uses of things like this. I put this together and I go, oh, I should be making loads of these. Think what you could do with loads of these in your, your kit of computer parts. Anyway, this is for our ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig, and earlier I fitted the ice tower onto the, the Raspberry Pi 4, and just to fasten it all down into place, went on the, very nicely. And uh, as you can see, I've also added a few standoffs. Well, I had them, I thought I might as well uh, put them in place. Just gives us an idea of where uh, things might end up. There'll be some top plates and base plates here eventually. But for now, let's go back to our M.2 SSD, which by the magic of filmmaking now contains a copy of Raspberry Pi OS, and we'll uh, insert it into the, uh, the Pi like that, which will probably be rather uh, unbalanced, but it'll work just about. We can add in our keyboard and our uh, mouse as well, and uh, yes, it's not going to be balanced, but it'll, it'll work. And I can now go and turn the thing on. There we are, it's come to life, and yes, there are lights in the uh, Ice Towers fan, and hopefully the Pi will now boot up. Yes, there we are, we've got the familiar four raspberries appearing on the screen. Always very reassuring to see the four raspberries on the screen as the Raspberry Pi is uh, booting up. And uh, in a second we should arrive in real time, yes, into a Raspberry Pi OS. And uh, just to prove we're running from the uh, M.2 SSD there, let's just do an uh, LSBLK, list block devices. We can see there, yes, we've got our uh, SDA, that's the uh, SSD, 120 gigabyte and now, now formatted up, so that's working clearly uh, very nicely. And I should say I had a little bit of messing around to do to get the Pi booting from this uh, M.2 SSD. Initially, I imaged Raspberry Pi OS to the SSD using Etcher and it wouldn't boot. But then I went into the Raspberry Pi itself, booted from a micro SD card, and I used the copier uh, down here in accessories, the SD card copier, to copy the micro SD card to the SSD, and that worked. Which is a little bit bizarre, but I just thought I'd let you know I had to do that. Whilst we're here in the terminal, let's also just run, uh, I think what it's sitting there, HD parameters. Let's test the speed of the, uh, the drive, which should be pretty good, of course. It's an SSD connected via USB 3. What's it going to give us? 
Oh, excitement. Oh, it's given us a 293.65 megabytes a second, a lot more than we get from uh, an SD card plugged into a, a Raspberry Pi. And uh, if you want to know, I'll just uh, plug in a micro SD card. There we are, it's come in as a, uh, a media, okay, and we'll just uh, go away. I don't want to do that, dearie me. I wish computer would just stop trying to be clever. Let's list lock devices again. That's sitting there, down there. So let's now just uh, rerun HD parameters using that uh, device. There we go. It uh, can't actually identify the uh, drive. Well, that's why we get the error. That's not a problem. But we see we get a speed of uh, what, about 40, 41 megabytes a second. So significantly less than the, the SSD. And this, of course, is why I'm choosing to boot my ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig from an SSD. And it's great to see it is now clearly here all working. So it now has to be time to face the more difficult hardware challenges of this project. Right, at the start of the video, I told you that this was going to be an iterative voyage of discovery. And this is exactly how things are turning out. What we're looking at here is what I imagined my Ultimate Pi 4 rig would end up looking like. Uh, some of the parts here are made out of paper at the moment. These are templates for parts to be made out of brass. We'll come to those in the next section. But the critical thing here is I've got a right angle USB 3 connector, a plug going down with its wire feeding directly into the M.2 enclosure, which is sitting beneath the Pi with the SSD in it. And uh, this was always my plan, to keep things nice and neat like this, to have a right angle connector and the SSD neatly below the Pi. But unfortunately, after a great deal of experimentation, several days trying to make things work, I cannot make this particular setup work looking exactly like this, which is a real shame. If we look what's going on, I've taken a right angle USB 3 lead like this, and I've cut it in two and stripped back the wiring. So here we have the uh, twisted pairs for USB 3 data transmission and reception, and we have the power wires, and we also have the legacy USB 2 data wires. And over here we have the M.2 adapter, which used to look like this, but which has had its connector removed. And if we look inside, my uh, plan here had been to uh, solder the wires from the uh, so we were just looking at these wires here. I plan to solder them to the pads here, or more accurately to these little pins that still remained on the top of the connector there. And uh, in theory, it was a great idea. I had worked out all the wiring, and I had a plan for replacing the shielding. But sadly, I just cannot get this to work in practice. In part, I just don't have the right tools for the job to work on something uh, this small. But uh, even if I did, the power leads here are actually wider, even stripped off like this, than the actual pads they go onto. So I don't think I could solder them on without actually having a, a short there. And uh, even if I could and I had better tools, I also face the challenge that my eyes just will not cooperate to do work of the, this, this really detailed work. And I've tried lots of different combinations of my close-up glasses, my reading glasses, and, and magnifiers. I just can't work comfortably on something this side. So I can't get this to work. And so I've had to revert to plan B. And so rather than looking like this, my ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig is going to look more like this. Where, as you can see, I've got a right-angle USB 3 plug going upwards this time with its cable through to a socket which plugs into a, a nice newer M.2 SATA SSD adapter which sits underneath. We can hold it in place but we will have this loop of wire which I really wanted to avoid. It's not brilliant but uh, I can't find a way out of that. I've been experimenting with all different types of connectors. I've had all sorts of connectors. I've bought some. I've looked at hundreds online. I can't find a way of doing this. Unless I guess you actually built a little circuit board with surface mounted components which would fit in to do the bridge between USB 3 and uh, the enclosure for the SSD. Anyway, that's the way things are. Sometimes you have to accept things not being quite as you anticipated they would be when you started out. So I think we'll now move on to replace the bits of paper here with some nice shiny bits of metal. Right. Here I am back again with a two millimeter brass sheet, which I'm going to use to make the uh, top and the, the base plates for the Pi 4 rig. And if you're wondering, I purchased this from eBay, which is where you buy everything you can't get from Amazon. I initially designed the parts in the free Inkscape drawing package that I looked at a few videos back and which I used to export DXF files. 
My idea was to send these files to an online service to get the parts produced by laser cutting. However, perhaps due to the current state of the world, this has not proved possible. And so I'm going to uh, ask uh, Henry the uh, hacksaw, along with Donald the drill and Freddy the file, to help me shape the metal in the old fashioned way. And some considerable time later, here we have our final parts all mounted on the rig, along with the uh, SSD. And uh, as you can see, I decided not to round the corners of the uh, plates I had got in my initial design, which were going to be a laser cut. And uh, it is fair to say that the quality of the metalwork and the cutting here is uh, not ideal. And uh, in part, this is because this whole video seems to be cursed. And it's also though what happens when you decide to do a quick bit of metalwork on your uh, kitchen floor. This said, I'm still pleased with the, the end result. I think it's got a great sort of steampunk feel to it with the, all the brass with the pie and the heat sink and things like that. I think it looks really cool. It's almost got a sort of a Babbage-esque look, hasn't it? With the, the parallel brass plates for, on the computer. It's like those very early mechanical computers a little bit anyway, in terms of the feel. And uh, if you look right at the end, you'll see that uh, below the right angle USB adapter that goes down to the SSD, I've put in the USB-A to USB-C adapter. And the reason I've done this is not all type A plugs will fit in below the right angle connector, but this will take any USB-C connector. It's also worth noting that this whole thing is really heavy. This is the heaviest pie rig I've ever handled. It's because you put lots of brass in it, Chris. That must be the reason. And I like a really heavy pie because it means when you plug in all the wires, when you plug in all the cables, the thing stays where it's put. And uh, talking of which, let's get this thing connected up and then turned on. There we are. We've now got the uh, ice tower fan come to life. We can get the full effect of our rig with the blue LEDs. And uh, as I'm sure some of you are thinking, this rig really ought to be great for a bit of overclocking. And so that is something I'll be trying overclocking the Raspberry Pi 4 in this rig in a future video. So there we are. I've built the ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig. Well, OK, I probably haven't built the ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig. I haven't even built the design I hope to build at the start of this video, but I'm still pretty pleased with the result. I've got my Raspberry Pi 4 all mounted up with a nice bit of brass and the ice tower cooler and booting from an M.2 SSD. And I hope that the process of constructing it and showing you what I've done has given you some useful ideas. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.